while. It's been pretty cold up here the last few days. So we had frost in the morning and like that. So uh, the weather has been cold. I guess this is like the middle of winter as far as it gets down here. And it's not really too bad. I mean, we have the, the, the Canadians telling us, that, ah, this is nothing. T-shirt weather. <laughs> Well, you know, if it's not freezing, if it's not if it's not white and and frozen, then it's not winter really. You know, uh, so I, I spent the winter on the Michigan Peninsula. I know how that is. So, uh, how many we got signed up? We've got something like fourteen. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. So today uh, we're going to continue with Nectar of Instruction, uh, except I haven't looked at the verse. Let me see. Text 6. There's some really difficult. Oh, this is okay. Okay. Some of the verses are toward the end of a really difficult uh, meter. This one's okay. Text 6. Trishtai svabhava janitair vapushash chadoshair na prakritatva mihabhakta janasya pashyet gangam bhasang nakhalu bud budafhena pankhair Brahma dravatvam abhaga chatinir dharmahai. <laughs> Not too bad. Translation. Being situated in his original Krishna conscious position, a pure devotee does not identify with the body. Such a devotee should not be seen from a materialistic point of view. Indeed, one should overlook a devotee's having a body born in a low family, a body with a bad complexion, a deformed body, or a diseased or infirm body. According to ordinary vision, such imperfections may seem prominent in the body of a pure devotee. But despite such seeming defects, the body of a pure devotee cannot be polluted. It is exactly like the waters of the Ganges, which sometimes during the rainy season are full of bubbles, foam, and mud. The Ganges waters do not become polluted. Those who are advanced in spiritual understanding will bathe in the Ganges without considering the condition of the water. Hmm. Very nice. So, the material body is always going to be full of so many faults. Huh? Material bodies are always imperfect. Huh? There's always something wrong. Never is there a time when this material body is perfect. Huh? And even if such perfection seems to exist, huh? like some people are very good looking by nature, but if you begin to inquire into their actual condition, their actual situation, we see that actually they have so many troubles, so many problems, huh? so many difficulties. Um, people in this world desire fame. Uh, they desire material perfections, which lead to attracting a lot of attention. But you find that when you have that attention, it starts to consume all your time and energy just to keep up with it, just to respond to it, just to deal with it. Uh, it's not really very much fun at all. It's more like a lot of hard work. That's why you have these Hollywood stars, you know, like throwing bricks at reporters <laughs> and stuff like this, because they're just tired of the constant attention. It's too much. Uh, so meanwhile, the pure devotees they're, they're off away from the public view. They're in a very, very secluded place, a place where other pure devotees uh, are there to associate with. Because a pure devotee doesn't like to associate with materialistic people. Uh, they don't like, they don't enjoy the same things. They don't do the same things. They don't 
appreciate life in the same way at all. Yeah. So neither do they spend a lot of time on, you know, um, going to the orthodontist and having perfect teeth or going to the to uh, you know various doctors and people like this and having perfect skin and perfect hair and perfect fingernails and all that all this stuff that materialistic people consider very important uh, because all of those things are just trivial they're all just uh, superficial inconsequential now ordinary people consider these things very important but True spiritual people, uh, especially the pure devotees, they don't, they don't even consider this body to be very important <laughs> or significant. Yet, the body of a pure devotee is pure by virtue of the fact that it is engaged constantly in devotional service to the Lord. Uh, the pure devotee doesn't have any material activities. Consequently, the body of a pure devotee is surcharged with transcendental energy. And simply by being in the presence of a pure devotee, one is exposed to vibrations of prema, of spiritual love. Uh, who came up with that expression, a bubble of love? Was that you? <laughs> Can I? <laughs> that uh, when we were, we were in Mexico, yeah. right? Yeah, and here we were, we were in the middle of this little town, and there was all kinds of nonsense going on, you know. Uh, but we were like in this bubble of love, you know. We had this house, big house on, well, big for that place anyway. But we had this house on like a, a hectare of land, which was very nicely landscaped and gardened. All kinds of exotic plants were there. And uh, the flowers were blooming all time of the year, and you know, uh, it was really a, a lovely place. And uh, there we were. We didn't really have much to do with anybody else, and we were just chanting a lot, doing a lot of devotional service. And we felt like we were in this bubble of love. Uh, well, of course, the, the radiations, of vibrations of love are coming from the holy name, coming from Krishna within the heart, reciprocating our devotional service. So naturally, other people who are around can also feel that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I keep saying this isn't rocket science. I mean, in a way it is, because it's different from material existence. We're on a transcendental platform of existence. And whether we're in the material world or we're in the spiritual world, we have an ecstatic relationship with Krishna. And other people can feel that. You know, people say, they look at us and they say, well, there's just something special about you guys. Uh, oh, I wonder what that could be. Um, <laughs> you know, who, wear, who else wears all white, you know? Um, but uh, even, you know, what's that? Oh, well, yeah, we're not concerned with them. But uh, in our tradition, of course, the Babaji's wear white. Um, we may change that when we go to India. We may adopt a saffron color. We'll have to see. Uh, because we don't really want to attract so much attention. Uh, we don't want to be, like, so famous. I remember when we went to India the first time, oh, my God. We were like rock stars. Everywhere we went, we would attract a crowd. You know, I mean, you couldn't even just go down to the stall on the, on the corner and buy a banana without attracting a huge crowd. And they're all like, you know, looking at, <laughs> watching every move you made, you know. You know, so it was, it was really crazy. Uh, so we, uh, we don't really want to attract that kind of attention. When we preach, yes, because we're representing Krishna. We're trying to repeat. Krishna's words and, and give Krishna's message and his teaching the way it is. But otherwise, we're not so concerned with that, you know. We're not so concerned with the happiness and distress of the material body. Confirmed. You know, the material body is always in some kind of distress, you know. There's always something that aches or something that gets cut or, um, 
you know, we're hungry, we're thirsty, we're hot, we're this, we're that. So something is always going on, some disturbance or some distress in this material world. But the devotee doesn't think about that. The devotee is always thinking about Krishna. And Krishna is what's really important. I mean, every day uh, now, I've had a lot of requests for astrology readings, Jyotish readings. And almost every day I'm doing a reading. And, and almost every day, I have to tell these people, look, you have good karma. Uh, most of the people who, who get astrology readings from me have pretty good karma, or they wouldn't even find our site. <laughs> you know, so they have they have to have they have to have pretty good karma just to, huh? Some karma, Some karma points. Yes, we have karma points on our website, so they have to find at least 